The ascension of Jesus seems kind of like a silly story. In fact, I even heard a pastor who was deconstructing his faith talking about sitting in Jerusalem on the hill where it was supposed to happen and kind of laughing as he tried to picture it. So did it happen? Is it symbolic? What does this story show us about how to interpret the many miraculous stories of the Bible? Hey, what's up, party people? I'm Brad Large. This is my channel, Reclaim Reformation, where we're striving to reform our vocations, families, and churches for the glory of God. So here's the story of the ascension in Luke, chapter 24, verses 50 through 53. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. So you can read a little more in depth in Acts uh, chapter 1, 6 through 11 uh, as well. But this is a good story to understand a few things like symbolism, biblical theology, and how to apply a story like this to your life. Symbolism. Is the Bible symbolic? Yes. Is the Bible true? Yes. So how can the Bible be symbolic and true at the same time? Real quick, leave a comment and let me know what you think about all that. Do you like reading the Bible more symbolically or do you read it more literally? God created the world in such a way that the truths we cannot see are illustrated by the reality we can see. Even the very names we use for God in the Bible, Yahweh, I am that I am, Lord, is representing God is reality. Jesus is the same essence of God and yet took on human form. The ascension is a symbolic act and it actually happened. That is how God operates. Did God create the cosmos and rest? Yes. Did God create the world in six days? Yep. Did Jesus actually rise from the dead? You got it. God's truth is. That concept ties this story in to the rest of the Bible. This is such a simple story. Jesus died and was buried in a tomb, then rose from the dead. After teaching the believers, who still did not recognize him most of the time, then he ascended into heaven. To be both symbolic and true, God is telling us something about the very nature of reality, that he created things to be true, and that means that there's a corresponding reality to truth. It's actually called a correspondence view of truth, if you want to Google it, and it's compared to coherence theory of truth or pragmatic views of truth. But it's an illustration to us that from the beginning, God's authority has been ultimate. God created us, and he owns us. And we see in many places that Jesus was there in the beginning. John 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. It was already His world. We were already His people. He didn't have to die on the cross to own us. He died on a cross to save us and give us an example. And just as God rested on the seventh day as a loving example to us about how to order our lives, he also took on human flesh to be a perfect example of love for us. Isn't that a good definition of love? Doing something good that doesn't benefit you at all, but does show the object of your affection that you love them and care about them? We see Jesus Christ give of himself as an example of how we should be, but are incapable of being. So we put our faith in him. When Jesus ascends, he's taking his place at the right hand of God. But more importantly, he's lovingly showing us doubters that we can trust the fact that he is in fact in authority. Jesus is giving us a symbol of his authority so that we can trust what he says. Like when he says that he'll come back to judge the living and the dead or gather up his people to himself and burn the chaff. And that ties into biblical theology. It's understanding a story in context from the beginning to the end of the entire biblical canon. The ascension is a real, a visible symbol that Jesus has sovereign authority. He went to the right hand of God so that he could send the helper, the Holy Spirit. In fact, we see time and again during Jesus' ministry that the disciples don't get the full weight of who Jesus is. Finally, the Holy Spirit's given them by Jesus, and then the disciples finally get it. Can you imagine having three years walking with Jesus regularly, being taught by him, and not understanding most of it? It takes the Holy Spirit. As you learn the stories, don't forget to beg God for understanding, for him to send his spirit to help you understand and apply it. The ascension is the expression of Jesus' authority at the right hand of God. That's the basis for obeying God's law, the basis for obeying Jesus' commands. Real quick, Jesus came not to abolish the law and the prophets. He is the fulfillment of them. Everything spoken of from the beginning of time is fulfilled in Jesus. 
This means that Jesus didn't just sweep the law aside, but he raised the standard even higher to its actual intent. Every time Jesus says, you've heard it said, but I say, he makes the law even more unattainable. Jesus doesn't compromise. It's not just murder that's against God's law, but anger. It's not just adultery that's against God's law, but lust. How do we apply that? We can't do anything with that teaching, but recognize that we're utterly hopeless unless God really does forgive us our sins. Jesus ascended to take his rightful place at the right hand of God and send the helper, the Holy Spirit. So we put our faith in Christ and he fills us with his spirit so that we can struggle every day with our sins until we finally hand them over to Jesus. We can't kill them. We have to hand them over. After all, Jesus ascended, not us. Jesus has power over sin and death, not us. Then over time, Jesus lovingly and assuredly gives us the faith and strength to start to unload our sins, to live a little better each day. He washes us of our sins as often as we turn to him, restoring our conscience and softening our hearts. The story of the ascension is such a simple thing. In fact, it's such a simple thing that many atheists and non-believers think that these stories are pretty funny. And I'll admit, when you think about someone just kind of floating up to heaven, it, it is a little bit funny. And if that's all it is, it would be funny. But this story is a simple example of a profound reality. God has always shown us the receipts. God has always given an example for us to follow that leads us to life.